The Ministry of Communications, Innovation, Digital Economy was created to foster a knowledge-based uh, economy and information society in the country. The ministry was created to facilitate ICT as a key tool in a transformation agenda for Nigeria in areas of job creation, economic growth, and transparency of governance. Joining me to look at this and the expectations from the new minister, Dr. Bosun Tijani, uh, for the entire industry and being joined by his startup coach, Mr. Idowu Akinde, to break this down. Thank you so much, Mr. Akinde. It's good to have this conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Tolu. Always a pleasure. I think a lot is expected from Mr. Bosunti Jani, but I want us to start with the mandate. What comes to your mind as his mandate for that industry? And one thing that pricks me is um, how we can, of course, increase the contribution of that sector to the GDP. That will obviously help us grow the economy. But before we get to that point, what more do you think needs to be done? Well, um, I mean, you said it, you said it all. The gentleman, uh, Dr. Boston Tijani, coincidentally, he just got his doctorate about a few months ago, now up to two or three months ago. And, you know, it's like the stars just aligned for him, right? You know, so uh, um, he's definitely a square peg in a square hole or a round peg in a round hole, right? You know, in the sense that, what we call the startup ecosystem of today, one could argue that he and a bunch of co-founders a couple years ago envisioned what we have today and started it with CC Hub, the co-creation hub, the one in at Saboyaba. And that has been the model or the forerunner that has inspired many other people, including myself, Bullion Labs, you know, many other innovation hubs, you know, tech hubs, you know, uh, innovation ecosystem enablers. He definitely has big shoes to fill because it's one thing to succeed in the world of private enterprise, right? It's another thing to succeed in a politically in a political appointment like that of a minister, where you are going to be working with career civil servants who may or may not 100% buy into your way of thinking. So if he had come as a private enterprise to propose things to them as a member of the public before now, he they may have wondered what does this person think about how we operate for him to propose this. Today, he has authority to use that private sector thinking to at least transform effectiveness, transform productivity, and hopefully make that ministry a solid, the kind of pillar for the Nigerian economy that we all hope it should be. That's my that's a summary of my expectations for him. I wish him the very best. Any support that he needs, uh, 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 I'm available. We're willing to provide, you know, and um, I wish him the best. Mm. You, we talked about cost-effective access to communications infrastructure throughout the country. How cheap can that be or how cost-reflective or effective do you think this can be so that we can get the best of services? So, you see, infrastructure... Uh, so you see, the infrastructure has been one of the hurdles that we've needed to cross for a long time as a country in order to deliver better end user quality of service to people like you and I when we buy modems, I don't want to show any brand, when we buy modems like this, right? Internet modems like this. So this is a private Wi-Fi. I can take it around town. This is as close to the user as you get, right? But this device connects to something which also rides on something and something and something. So all those layers of some things are what we call technology infrastructure. Now, one of the reasons why we have, we, we have not enjoyed a higher quality of service like we currently enjoy with these end user devices 
is that the, the, the sophistication and the spread, the geographical spread of our national nationwide infrastructure, communications infrastructure is limited. And this, the telco sector, the internet sector, you know, you know, the ISP sector in particular has been praying and craving and doing everything it can to attract more and more investments that can deepen and widen the quality of infrastructure that is available for communications in Nigeria. We all know about dropped calls in Nigeria when we make calls. We all know about uh, calls connecting to other lines when we make calls and stuff like that. With better infrastructure, the defect rates or the error rates in that service will naturally drop. This, I believe, is the goal that the person who drafted that mandate for whomever sits in the office of the minister that Botsun, Botsun, Dr. Botsun Tijani today sits in, whomever drafted it had a certain picture in mind. I believe the picture I just painted is the picture that that person had in mind. Now, his job, one of his jobs, right? You know, if we, if we say that those mandates are his marching orders, are these KPIs, are the things by which he's going to be measured after X years, okay? Um, his job is to take the quality of user experience for you and I and 200 million other people scattered across this country from where it is today to the level that is somehow better by improve by number one improving infrastructure well i'm i'm done on that <laughs> that made real sense let's now talk about other things that can be done we know of digital content creation domestic software applications of course and delivery of private and public services over the internet what do you think dr tijani can do to promote the utilization of ICT in all spheres. Okay. Thank you so much for this particular point. The, I would call it an irony, right? But the beautiful thing is that Dr. Tijani has, Dr. Tijani needs no introduction to social media, to working with the youth, to working under a tight budget to learning to pitch investors, local and international. He has no, he, he, he's not a newcomer to the field of helping both personally building a business almost out of nothing and then helping young people who join that community, the CC Hub community that I mentioned earlier, to build their own businesses as well, also out of nothing. So if you talk about content creation, proliferation of ICT and utilization of ICT generally across all spheres of the Nigerian economy, I actually cannot think of a better person to sit in that office, right? Because number one, he, he doesn't need lecturing and reorientation on the mindset of the youth. Right? Remember that Nigeria is 70%, 35 years and below, okay? So he doesn't he, he don't have customers. He sees them every day. He walks into his office in Sabo Yaba and they are there in his office. That's the demographic that is in his office. They are all 35 and below, right? So they are, they, he, he works with them all the time. Through that, he's built a business that has expanded beyond Nigeria into, I think, Kigali and Nairobi. You know, so he's done, you know, well, you know, you, you know, by those standards, achieving these things that are now expected of him on the public sector scale. But I say, like I said in the beginning, I say there's a word, there's a note of caution in there. It's one thing to be, to, to have a mind that is so optimized for success in the private sector because private sector is all about efficiency, performance, profit optimization, right? So you can be a square 
how do they say that you can be a straight arrow in the private sector and nobody nobody criticizes you nobody castigates you for it but the public sector is a whole different kettle of fish you got to learn how to play the politics compromise give and take you know quote unquote horse trading right so uh he's definitely going to make enemies because he's not going to be able to satisfy everyone the way he would have done um in the in the in the in the private sector right you know but this is the time for him to deploy excellent emotional quotient emotional intelligence excellent stakeholder management right because he has a boss to report to he has fellow uh, uh, ministers in the FEC to report to, and he has the youth who are looking up to him, who he doesn't officially report to, but he owes an obligation because everybody's like, oh, this guy that we all used to see, you, you know, if you just walk into CC Hub, you can see him. He's now the minister, he's 40 something, you know, that, that's really strange for Nigerian politics. We really, really hope that this guy can, you know, bring about the kind of change that the youth have been clamoring for. So it's he's kind of on a hot seat. <laughs> I don't envy him. But again, I have big, big amount of confidence in him. I really, really feel confident that if anybody could get that job done, it's probably him. You know, so like I said, I wish him the best, you know, but I think that he's 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 well suited for that job. Honestly, I guess we need to have a part two of this discussion because there's still a lot we have to look at structure in place, the likes of NIDA, NCC, and all of that, what their roles will be, and of course, some initiatives that should be introduced. But for today, this much time can take. Mr. Doha, King Diamonds, thank you so much, startup coach. I know you want to get back to work. We'll talk later. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Tolu. Always a pleasure.